The topic now is uh, energy and power. Energy and power are, are two words that are used quite a bit, especially on the evening news, and it turns out the mass media often gets these two concepts uh, confused with each other. So I want to make sure it's really important that we it's really important that we have a firm understanding of the difference between energy and power. And once you understand the difference between energy and power, when you hear it used incorrectly in the news or in the newspaper, it, 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 it it's very grating and obvious to you. So to begin with, for our purposes in this uh, study, we're going to define energy as a fundamental quantity. For us, energy is going to be a fundamental quantity. Energy is the cost to do something. If you're doing something, and I mean, when I mean, whenever there's a verb in your sentence, I mean, you're talking, you're moving, you're heating something, you're lighting something, you're breathing. I mean, anything you do, any verb in your sentence is going to require energy. It requires energy to do any kind of action. So it's the the expense or the amount of, of 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 the cost to actually do any of the verbs in your sentence for us will be energy. Energy can take on a lot of different forms. Energy can be mechanical energy. We have electrical energy. We got thermal energy. We have acoustical energy. We have uh, luminous energy, like how much light. Energy can take on a lot of different forms. Now there is really only one energy in the world. These are just energy takes on different forms. Energy is a wonderful chameleon. It can be one form or the other. We can convert energy from one form. We can take mechanical energy and convert it into electrical energy. And we can take electrical energy and convert it to thermal energy. You can convert energy from one form to the other. Of course, converting energy, there's a verb in that sentence, there's conversion going on. Well, that's going to cost you something as well. So when you convert energy from one form to the other, there's in general going to be a loss of that energy. Some energy will be expended in order to make that conversion. But for our purposes, and you know, the energy is a fundamental quantity. It's going to be something that it just is. Now, I know in the SI system, energy is defined in terms of other units. But for us, electrically, energy is a fundamental quantity. The symbol for energy is going to be W. All right, and that is an uh, kind of tipping a hat to the mechanical engineers who call energy work. And so we will use W as the symbol or the variable for energy. The unit of measure from the SI system for measuring energy is the joule, named after James Prescott Joule, an English scientist and uh, also a brewer. There's the Joule Brewery uh, in England. Uh, Joule was a scientist in the 18th century. We need our analogy to go along with this, and since energy is a cost to do something, since you do any any verb requires a cost to be paid, well, energy is money. Energy is money, and, and and unlike some of the other analogies and that uh, you know I'll use in this study, in this analogy is actually very much reality. When you uh, get the bill at the end of the month uh, that pays to keep the lights on, uh, what you end up paying for are uh, uh, kilowatt hours, and we'll see that that is simply uh, uh, that's an amount of energy. And so you don't pay the power bill at the end of the month. You are paying the energy bill. Well, power is uh, the concept that we need to discuss. And power is uh, a rate at which your energy is generated or expended. You can, uh, you know, uh, create this, you know, energy, create this value that you can possibly sell or use, and or you can you can be expending. You can be using this energy to do something. And so the, r if you're going to be expending energy or generating energy or transforming energy from one form to another, then you will probably very, at some point, become concerned at the rate at which you, this energy is being expended or generated or transformed. And that is the power. Power is a rate at which energy is being generated or expended or moved about. The variable for power is uh, going to be P, and P is uh, dW dt. Power is a rate at which energy is being, it's, it's amount of energy dW per a given amount of time dt. Power must have a magnitude, the dW dt value, and it also has a direction. Is the energy being expended or is it being generated? Are you basically spending your money or are you earning your money? The unit of measure for power is the watt, named after James Watt, the inventor of the practical steam engine. Uh, he was an English inventor, lived also in the kind of the last half of the 18th century. A watt is a joule per second. So as you can see from this, uh, a joule per second, joule is a, an amount of energy, seconds is an amount of time, so a joule per second. A watt is an energy flow rate. It's an energy flow rate. So for our analogies again, if energy is money, 
then power is simply money per time. It is how much money you're spending in a given amount of time. It's how much money you've earned over a given amount of time. So if you're in a contract accounting person, uh, the spending rate is typically called the burn rate. How quickly are you burning through your money? Uh, and it's so many, you know, $1,000 per day is how, I'm, how much I'm burning, you know, the money I'm burning through every day. Or uh, an earning rate, is a, a salary is an earning rate. Uh, so, you know, you're going to make $60,000 per year. So burn rate or salary, those are like powers. It's an amount of money that you spend or earn given over a certain given time. Let's do a couple of examples, maybe that will clarify. So we have a particular system. The energy in your system is 5 joules. So in your system, um, you have a system here, and the energy in your system is a constant 5 joules. And the question is, what is the, uh, the power, the power rate associated with this system? Well, power is dW dt. Power is the rate at which energy is being moved or expended or generated. And in this case, we know that the power is going to be the d time derivative of the energy. Well, what is the energy of the system? The energy of the system is simply 5 joules. So we need the time derivative of 5. And the time derivative of a constant 5 is 0 watts. If in this particular system, we have a system that has an energy which is remaining constant, our energy is a constant 5 joules. Well, how much is the energy changing? Well, the, the, what is the rate at which the energy is changing? Well, it's zero because the energy is not changing at all. The energy in the system is constant 5 joules. The power is therefore zero watts. That means you can have a system that has energy, possibly has a great deal of energy, but has zero power because that energy is not changing. Let's do a little bit more interesting example. We have a system. In this case, the system has an energy, and that energy is changing. The energy is 5t, excuse me, 5, uh, 12 t to the 5 joules. The question is, what is the power rate of this system? So once again, we know that power is dW dt. So in this particular case, we're looking for the time derivative of the energy the energy function and this energy function is 12 t to the 5 joules or t is the amount of time in seconds. Now why is the energy of the system changing? Well we don't know. We just know it is. It's 12 t to the 5 joules. So the time derivative of 12 t to the 5, we'll differentiate this and you'll find it's 60 t to the 4 and then of course this is in joules per second therefore the power will be in watts. So if we're interested in finding uh, the power at a particular power rate at a particular point in time, notice in this example that the uh, the power the power rate itself is time varying. So depending on what the time t is, the power rate is going to be constantly changing. So if we're interested in finding the power at let's say t equals two seconds. Well, that's going to be 60 t to the 4 evaluated at t equals 2 seconds. And you have 60, uh, 16, uh, 2 to the 4 is 16, times 60. And then we see the power rate is simply going to be 96 watts. Maybe uh, the question is posed to you in the other direction. Here we have a system that has, we're given the power rate. The power rate is changing. For negative time, the power rate is zero. From t uh, for time uh, t equals zero up to two seconds, we have a power rate of three watts, three joules per second. And this is absorbing, so it's absorbing three joules per second. And this also we have a time which is from t equals two to eight seconds, we have a negative power absorbed, that is we're generating 2 watts, 2 joules per second, and then after t greater than 8 there is no, the power rate is 0 again, and the energy is not going to change. The question is how much energy is absorbed between t equals minus 1 and a positive 4 seconds. Well, we know that the power is dW dt, power is dW dt, so how do we figure out what the energy is given the power? Well, we can rearrange this equation and we see that P 
dt equals dw. So that is if we have power, if we have a power uh, rate, p, that's operating for a, uh, a small sliver of time, all right, p dt, that's going to generate a small sliver of work or energy, dw. So over a given a small amount of time, dt, there is a little bit of work done, dw, which is p times dt. Well, I need to add up all the works. And so how do we add up all the works? Well, we, we simply integrate all the dw's. Integrating all the dw's means that uh, the integral of p of tau d tau will simply be the amount of energy or work that is done at a given time t. Well, we've added up them all from negative infinity up to a time t. That way we've added up all the work up to time t to give us the work at time t, w of t. So we can do this example here. There's really not much need to integrate. That's a really, really simple function. So we can just say the integral is the area under the curve. And so I know that the work, the energy that's done from negative 1 to 0 seconds, all right, from negative 1 to 0 seconds, the power rate is 0. So the area under that curve is going to be 0. The energy from 0 to 2 seconds well, we have a, a power rate of 3 watts, and that occurs for a, an interval that is 2 seconds long. Remember, that's 3 joules per second that's been expended for a 2 second interval, which gives us 6, excuse me, get 6 joules. And then the energy from 2 seconds to 4 seconds. Well, during that interval, we see the power rate is negative 2 watts, and 2 seconds to 4 seconds is a 2 second interval. So we have negative 2 joules per second absorbed for 2 seconds, which gives us negative 4 joules total. And so the total amount, the total amount of work from negative one second to four seconds is simply going to be the sum of all these and we see the total amount will be zero plus six minus four and that'll be a positive two joules.